My name is Mr. Ridgeway, and welcome to the first ever episode of Ridgeway History. We are going to get right into it, and we are going to start off with talking about the Romans. How do they come about? What's their introduction? And how do they get to where they are? Okay, so a couple of essential questions that are going to always guide you through ever, well, any mini lesson that I ever do on here. First of all, how does geography affect the development of a civilization? And then second, how does cultural diffusion and assimilation actually work in history? So for the first one, so how does geography influence the way that people live and how they express themselves and the things they decide to do? And then second, how does cultural diffusion and assimilation, so it's the spread of cultural ideas, and then how do people accept, reject, or do other things with those ideas? Okay? So essential questions in mind, let's continue on. So how did geography actually influence Rome? Well, if you've looked at the Greeks before, it's kind of a good comparison you can make with them. Okay, so like the Greeks, they were also on a peninsula, which is an island surrounded by water on three sides. Uh, there's mountains up in the north that you can see up at the top of your screen. Those are the Alps uh, that are right up here. Um, and those are actually quite hard to cross. So Italy, um, you know, besides having a few north to south mountains, is actually uh, pretty isolated from invaders from the north. We'll talk about Hannibal being an exception later. Uh, generally speaking, it was also quite easy to unify because the mountains were in here in the center of Italy um, weren't really too serious. And other than that, um, you kind of get both things going on, unity and isolation. So where did Rome actually come from? There's actually quite a few different groups on the Italian peninsula uh, before Rome uh, existed or really came to be known as Rome as we know as a, uh, know of it today. And so you had several groups. You had Greeks, um, which were over, you know, from the Greeks that we looked at before, uh, a group called the Etruscans, which we'll talk about here in a minute, and then also the Latins, uh, which do eventually become, we know them now today as Romans, okay? Rome actually began as a city-state, which we've looked at before in Greece. Um, and before Rome became Rome, actually the Etruscans controlled a lot of central Italy, okay? So keep in mind the Etruscans, because when we look at the Etruscans and actually how they were influenced or how cultural diffusion and assimilation happened in this context, um, the Romans slash Latins uh, appro approached the Etruscans with quite a few different um, means and methods. So they adopted some things, such as the alphabet, the architecture, which we know the Romans invented the arch. They actually got that from the Etruscans. Uh, but the Romans also took uh, some Etruscan ideas, such as god and goddesses, and then blend them into kind of their own um, own belief system. There were, though, things about the Etruscans that the Romans were not a fan of. And that would be the idea of having a king or a monarch. Romans were not very keen on having a, another king or, you know, somebody in charge of, um, you know, a monarchy that we would think of today. Rome, in its initial conception, started as a representative government. Okay, so if you kind of had to boil this down as to who influenced Rome, it's certainly the Etruscans, but how they influenced Rome is varied. You know, the Romans accepted, they rejected, and then they blended some of the cultural influences from the Etruscans. There is a really, really cool video tour as well that I will show you here. Um, if you go and click on this link, and I'll pull up a brief a brief clip of it here for us just to watch, um, it's a fantastic video that takes you on a 3D tour of Rome. So I'll go ahead and point out some really, really cool sites here uh, that you can go zoom around. Uh, this software was actually developed by a company that was working with Google, and so this is uh, yeah, it's called Rome Reborn. Okay, now it was a it was a kind of a beta project for this company in Google um, back a while ago, and the the idea was to can we present a tour of Rome as it was in 320 CE? So this would have been about 30 years before Constantine, uh, I believe, was in power, um, and so we're going to take you on this tour, and then we'll uh, we'll go check it out. I'll point out a few interesting things along the way here. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, won't have time for all of it, but okay. So if you didn't know, Rome was founded on the Tiber River, which is actually what we're flying over right now in the video. Okay, and that's Tiber Island. Okay, and the Tiber River flows through Rome. Okay, so as it goes through Rome, there's uh, seven hills basically that Rome is organized upon. We're start where you can see one right now. We'll come back to those in a minute. So up here coming down on our right, or actually this way for you guys, uh, is the Imperial Palace and the Circus Maximus, which is where, if you might have known, they held chariot races, which is really, really cool. 
Um, so the Emperor would actually walk out of the palace that's right at the top of the screen, and he would walk out to that stand you can kind of see, and he would host the chariot races at Circus Maximus. Uh, running the chariots was thought of as a very um, imperial or emperor-like thing to do, so the Emperor would often preside over uh, chariot races. Okay. Um, a few other co things coming up here that I do want to point out, uh, and this is the uh, Aqua Claw. So, uh, Pantheon. Pantheon's a really cool building. Dedicated to all the Rome god and goddesses that were, um, you know, during, you know, that happened during this time, uh, or that. Um, and then other than that, um, that's just, again, just, just this really, really cool video tour um, as they send you on a really cool look at what Rome might have looked like a long time ago. So again, um, I highly encourage you, if you get extra time, check that out. Some really, really cool stuff there. So just remember, keep in mind, okay, as, as you're kind of leaving this lecture, a couple of things. So who influenced the Romans? Not, not only who, but how did they influence? Like, what, how did it happen? What was the way? Okay? And then also, how did geography influence Rome? If you can keep those things in mind, then you're on your, uh, you're on your way. Alright? See you later!